There we go. Okay, yep. For some reason, my brain was telling me that this one was straight and I didn't fuck it up. And my brain was wrong. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to start putting together our starter factory here. Uh, so if you didn't catch the last episode, we spent that episode building this awesome pyramid here. And uh, now we're going to start putting stuff inside of the pyramid. Uh, before we get started with that, though, we're going to... We need a, a better way to get up here, uh, because in the last episode, I was able to walk up these ramps but now it doesn't seem to let me do it so i don't know the game's just acting kind of weird if i get up here now yeah see it won't let me walk on it now you guys saw me walking on this in the last episode so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what what was different but um we need uh to create a stair a stairway up to uh, the factory from down here anyway and we're gonna try out those new foundation stairs that we bought in the awesome shop. So we're going to use the four meter stairs here and let's put those up uh, right there and zoop them on down to here. Cool. All right. And then underneath those, let's do the inverted uh, ramps. So we'll put you like so there. That looks pretty damn good. Oh, you know what, though? I just thought of something. Can you put... Can you put rails on stairs? Let's take a look at that. You can. Well, hot damn. Because, you know, safety is important. It's not as important as efficiency, but it's still important. Um... Yeah, I guess we can't do much about that. Okay, that looks good. I am actually going to be putting rails up along, well, not on the outside, but along there too, eventually. Very good. Now, um, I want to do a couple other things real quick before we actually get started with the build. I have been making over here some SAM fluctuators. Uh, so I got 319. Let's grab all of those. I have to make that by hand, so what I've done a couple of times now is I just come over to here and grab a bunch of this and then sit here and, and handcraft it and go AFK for a second or whatever. But um, I want to... Let's see if we can research the next capacity for the depot. I'm much more interested in capacity than I am upload speed. Upload speed's nice and we will do... You know, we'll get all that eventually too, but I'd Right now, I'd much rather have capacity. But we are limited by Mercer Spheres in particular. So let's go to the MAM here. Alien Tech. And we want to be looking down here on the left side. So that's going to cost us three spheres. In, uh, increase the stack by one. So let's do that one now. Dimensional expansion increased to 200%. Refining manipulation of SAM allows us to now deconstruct non-living matter down to its atomic components in one dimension, and store it in basic bound states in another. We do not resonate with the tribute song. Do not worship at the window. Desecrate our temple gifts. This shall a serenade as sour and salt. My intention was not to encroach, if that is what upsets you, nor was it to dispose of material, I do not waste. Hate <laughs> it is not waste. Okay. Uh, Alright, so that got us uh, to, to 200%. What does this one need? Yeah, see, we don't, we don't have enough Mercer Spheres to do the next stack increase. Um, so, that means then that we now can double the stacks. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Okay, cool. And I think we'll use our remaining Mercer Spheres just to make four more depots. So let's go. Let's queue up four of those. And we're just going to need... Oh, we're going to need modular frames. 
That's the one thing I don't have really much of because I haven't... Uh, I, I did set up a little production thing for them uh, temporarily, but not um, anything substantial. Really, that's all I have left for modular frames. Shit. All right, I'm probably have to go AFK and craft a bunch of those as well. Let's put this in here. Okay, well, let me. Uh, I'm gonna handcraft 30 of those because I'd like to make four more of these depots. Let's do one other thing too. I want to grab uh, these heat sinks, these aluminum sheets. Well, I'm gonna hang on to the rubber and plastic, but these turbo motors in particular. Uh, also got 26 crystal oscillators from. Doug the dogger, but I want to hang on to those because we need those for the big signs among other things. And let's see, what else did we need? We need some more wire. Okay. So I think we'll keep one dimensional loader just for us to manually upload stuff to. And so I... Made enough stuff for four. So, so I think... Yeah, I think we have five of these. If I add that... Yeah, okay. We have enough to make five. Okay. So let's put... What do I have in here? We've, we already have one uh, for steel beams and concrete. So, yeah. Reinforced plate, cable, iron plate, rods, and wire. That's five. Perfect. Okay, so that's iron plate. That's rods. That's wire. Cable. Just double-checking to make sure I'm those. that's actually correct. And I think reinforced plates was the other one, which is this one. Yeah. Whoop. Perfect. Okay. So these guys will keep our depots topped off. But it's such a cool thing to be able to do, man. Okay. Yep. See, they're they're growing. Excellent. Right now, we currently have 20 coupons. So let's let's stop that for a minute. I I hooked up the the last smart splitter uh, to uh, the the thingy here because you know thingy because that's a that's an actual technical term. Uh, the awesome sink uh, because this was starting to get jammed up. Um, I I made a lot of shit <laughs> over there and it's still. It's still being hauled over here by our tractor. Anyway, never, nevertheless, what we want to do is um, let's see how many points if we throw in. What will the sheets give us? Yeah, I mean, sheets are they're later game items, but they're still fairly basic. But we've got a few points. Uh, not points, but a few, well, points towards the next coupon, I should say. Um, the heat sink might, eight heat sinks might get us there. Yep. That did. 21 points. Beautiful. Uh, this is all compliments, once again, of Doug the Doggo. And then uh, these turbo motors are probably going to go crazy. Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. Wow. That got us, like, what, 11 coupons? Oh, my God. That's amazing. That is amazing. I, I'll tell you what, you guys. If you play this game and you've been on the fence about whether or not you should tame a doggo do it it is so worth it it's because of Doug that we've been able to get so many things from the shop so er relatively early on we got to get him over here though he's still over at the at the starter area okay so um, I might help if I actually grab the coupons if I want to use them what do you think minor detail Do I 
have any more. If I did, they'd probably be in here. I don't. Okay. Let's take a look at the shop here. Alright, I want to get... I want to get floodlights. I really want to get these signs, though, but man, we gotta... I gotta go get quartz crystal. We are gonna set up, I mentioned this in the last episode, we are gonna set up a little bit, a, a little quartz and sulfur production here at this factory, too. Um, all right, let's come back to that. There's some customizer things we definitely want at some point. Walls, yeah, walls. Uh, no, actually, yeah, we want steel framed windows. Let's get that. I absolutely want that. But let's go back to customizer. I want to get uh, the wall material customizer, uh, custom stuff. And um, I think I'm going to hold off on the tar roof. Okay, so that still leaves us 17 coupons. Um, anything else? Nope, looks like we've purchased everything in the walls category. Architecture. Eventually want metal pillars. I, I want the structural frame set. And we'll try out the new barriers at some point, too. Uh, I'm not really interested in equipment or parts at this point. We'll get that stuff eventually, the coffee cup and all that, just for funsies. So I think probably the next... I don't remember how much these cost. Um, so that's, that's 17. Okay, let's sit on those coupons for now. Because I really want to get the signs. And let's look at quartz for a second. Yeah, we haven't really done much with quartz, have we? Wait a minute, don't I already have some quartz? I do. I got. Here, let's grab all of this stuff. Okay, we'll research the crystals. I think that's what we needed to unlock the signs. Or no, we need crystal oscillator. Research completed. Quartz crystal recipe unlocked. New quartz research available. What we actually need, uh, we need the crystal oscillators for the big signs. Uh, Explorer, yeah, that's that's fun, but especially once you get the the jet pack, you can move around so much better just with the pack. Okay, so this requires just a few more of the of the uh, crystal thingies. Are you serious? We have just exact the exact amount we need. Because you want 100, right? Oh my god. That's awesome. Okay, let's make uh, 19 more of these. Well, assuming it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Oh no, it's not. Ah, uh, nah. Okay. Not quite. Fair enough. Um, I'll, I'll go gather a whole shit ton of quartz off camera in between episodes. I don't want to spend any more time on this right now. We need to get going on our build. Alright guys, uh, first thing we're going to do here uh, is I'm going to make myself uh, some temporary scaffolding. Okay, that should be good. Let's jump up here. Now, um, I'll tell you a couple things about how this is going to work. Uh, this factory is going to be based upon a bus feed and return design. All of our logistics are going to be visible, but they're going to set up, uh, be set up nice and neat, and they're going to look cool, uh, with, especially with the Mark III belts and the lights. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to run our inputs up the center of the factory that's what these red red uh, tiles are and then our outputs are going to come back down from the top uh, and run down through this hole 
So we're we're routing the inputs around this way uh, and going up here, <clears throat> and then all the outputs are going to come down this hole and be routed out that way towards uh, what will ultimately be our storage. So it's going to look really cool when it's all set up. And we need to run these belts in the order in which I set them up uh, on the conveyor road. I did that deliberately uh, to, in order to get this to work. Now we have to make sure that the belts, the the belt that's furthest out is still, you know, on the inside of this pillar here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab uh, the the Caterium belt first. That's the one I want first. Put it in straight mode. And, oh, that's right. We're going to have a problem with this. So I think what we'll do to deal with that issue is... Um, actually, yeah, we're going to have to put... We're going to have to put a, a conveyor lift here. Okay, and then I want to put this, I think, here. <clears throat> um, we might be able to hold that back one. Let's take a look. -y. Look, see here. Wait. Yeah. Um, in f fact, oh no, yeah, we want to hold it back one, not two. Something weird too, if, if I grab the ceiling hanger and I try and place it just by itself, it won't let me rotate it. You know, like it'll let me rotate it on the foundation, but it doesn't let me rotate it here. But if I use the belt to, to set it there, then it, then it works. It's just really weird. Okay, so we want to hold this... Um, one, uh, basically in the center is where we want that. So we want it right there. Right, okay. Now this should be lined up correctly. So we'll bring it to here. And then we want to run this one down, um, uh, yeah, this way. And then we'll bring it back until it's at its maximum. That'll look okay. Man, I have to I have to say I really like this straight belt mode. It's so damn useful. Let's get some uh, conveyor lifts out. Everything's Mark three, and make sure that it's going in. That one's got to go that direction, and then these three go this direction. And then we can run that right into there. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, nice. Let's do the next one. We're gonna have, uh, we're gonna use lifts for these other ones. Uh, so okay, how are we gonna do that? We're going to need to. We want them, their lifts to start on a line with this one. So if we. I think that's where that we want the hanger to be. And let's give it um how much of a gap is it gonna have over here? here turn that off for a second. Okay, so it's gonna be one, two, three over. Okay. I think we we need it to go here. So one, two, three. Now before we set the other ones, let's check this and make sure that it is positioned correctly. So we'll grab a lift, mark three, and we want to put this down here. And that is going the right direction. Now pop you into there, and then you... Oh, no. Yeah, we're definitely... <laughs> yeah, we have, to, we have to have this lift here. Otherwise, these are going to run into the concrete pillar. So this has to go back quite a ways more. Um, 
I'm going to say one, two, three. Let's try. Let's try there and see if that works. Okay. Uh, all right. For I guess we don't use a lift on this one. So let's go back to here and then to this way. And we're just going to use two ceiling hangers for this one. I thought the lift was the right height, but apparently it is not. Uh, no, we need to hold that back. Another click. Another unit. That's correct. Everything nice and straight. Nice and level, except for that little bin there, which we cannot to do anything about. Oh. That's still not right. All right. What that means then. I think what we're going to have to do is put a one meter foundation. Oh, let's set it to vertical. Come on, man. There we go. And don't do that. Okay, now put that there and pick up here. Get rid of this. Get rid of this and get rid of that. And put that in straight mode. Not that that made a whole lot of difference. There we go. Okay. We should be able to use lifts for the rest of them. So I think this is, it's only going to be this one that's going to be a little jank. And what we can do now is we can just take another lift and do this with it and call it good uh, or hanger I should say but this is now going to have to go up and um, this is like more than it's like two and a half down so probably we're going to need to go at least six so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That still might be too steep, but let's just see what it does. We do not want to be in straight mode for this. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay. Ah, logistics. You got to love the logistics. I think that all looks good. All right, let's run this down. it to oh yeah put it in straight mode yeah it's gonna just kind of not in the right spot is it okay then let's just bring it to here and let the game do the work for us I uh, just quite didn't make it alright let's line it up with this other hanger and then we can put it in there That works. Everything evenly spaced. We want this to look good underneath too, because it's how we roll. All right. Now the next one needs to be one, two, three, four. Let's get a lift and Whereabouts do we think that's going to need to go? It's going to need to turn that way. I'm guessing right there. This is our copper line. Let's get that one in there too. And we're in straight mode. Why? Now what's your problem? Oh, we're too far down. Okay. So that's got 
one marker and one light showing, so we need to go up one from there. Okay, that's how we had it before, so we're just going to bump it up one. I don't... I don't know what's wrong with that. What's wrong with that? That should work fine. I don't see any issues. Or do I? Why doesn't that work? What if we... What if we pull it from this side? Alright. Then we just won't go into straight mode. It just didn't like the bends. I don't know why. It looks good to me. Maybe I started singing straight modes praises a little too soon, eh? You know, now that I'm looking at this... It almost looks like we could hold that Katerium belt back one notch to the west. Uh, let's... Let's look at that. So I want it to be right. So, uh, okay, so the hanger needs to be over that seam. Let's see if it'll let us do that. I don't know if it will or not. Yeah, it does let us do that. Okay. I just had it over further than I needed to. Um, where are we going? We're going all the way down there. And now, of course, it's too far. So... Let's go, let's see, one, two, three, four. At the end of the fourth. Uh, foundation there. When we're, uh, when we have, have this all in place, I'm gonna redo the hangers so they all match. Um, okay, well, let's worry about that when we're done with the rest of this. Okay. Now we come to here. And... Alright, hold on. I want to move... I think I want to put this here. I'm going to put one. There. And we'll put one here. I'm doing this for aesthetic reasons. I want them all to, you know, be lined up so everything is nice and neat. Why don't we also do one here for each of them? Oh, no, we can't. We can't. Well, you know what we could do, actually? We could stagger these um, by, say, two. One, two. I think that'll work. So this one would go here and then back to this way. And then the final one would be back to this way. If that was the right position. We'll see in a second here. No. It pushes them over too far. So if we staggered them by three. What are you doing? Yep. There we go. That one still can't quite make it. Okay, so again, we'll have these hangers all match up right there. And in you go. 
I still think that's going to be too... Yeah, that's still too tight. And that's because this one needs to go back another one. And this one needs to go back two. That's that's what we need to do. Okay. Let's get rid of this one. Okay. Grab the Mark III lift. And this one should be... There, I think. And we'll take it out of straight mode. And it's one uh, too far down. Okay, so this needs to go up a notch. We have two markers showing and one light. Okay, so we had two markers showing one light, so we need to bump it up one that way. Okay. That part of it is about as neat as we're going to be able to get it with the kind of odd uh, curves we have on some of that stuff. Can I run up this now? Oh, for goodness sakes. I can't if I get my parachute on. So if I did this right, we should be able to just pop right into there. And, well, we still want to match up these other hangers, so. Uh, wait a minute. Those are all evenly spaced, right? Okay tell you what let's do oh I need to be in straight mode yeah there we go okay I was not in straight mode so that's why it was kind of doing some weird shit there all right beautiful so we have all of our input lines hooked up and everything is nice and straight and evenly spaced. We've got cool looking staggered uh, ceiling hangers there. And I think it looks damn good. Let's take all this down. Let's go up to the next floor. Hey, look at that. I can parachute up the stairs. How's that for a nice trick? All right, let's get this out. I color those. Now these two here, this is the copper and the caterium. They're going to go up to the next floor because we're going to do our copper production on the second floor. Uh, and I want, yes, that's correct. Okay. I want you to go into there. And you also into there. This is going to look so damn cool. All right, now you go up to the ceiling and stop right there, and you go up to the ceiling and stop right there. Now remember, on the outputs, we're going to have a whole bunch of these things coming back down through this end. And once everything is running and all the product is moving and stuff, it's going to look really cool. All right, guys. Uh, to start this process off, um, I am going to use Satisfactory Tools. I, well, I have been using it uh, to build this, and I will probably start using this for all of our builds. Uh, in Update 8, I did everything manually uh, through a spreadsheet, and 
I did it that way because it just really helped me, you know, wrap my brain around what was going on, but it was also a lot of work. Uh, so I decided to try out uh, Satisfactory Tools, and I really like uh, the app and, and, you know, how it helps you, you know, put together a factory. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, basically it's SatisfactoryTools.com, um, and then what you can do is you can start a, uh, a new factory. So this is, uh, I, well, I named this Iron Car copper starter factory but you know starter factory <clears throat> and then basically what you do is you tell it uh, what products you want and how many of those products you want you can also go in and tell it if you want to use any alternate recipes like in our case we're going to be using the bolted frame the cast screw and the caterium wire and I think that's all I'm going to use for alternate recipes for our first build and if you only want to use the alternate recipe then you have to disable the base recipe. Uh, otherwise, it'll it might use one or the other. But if you want to force it to, to use the alternate, then you have to. Uh, where is that? Yeah, bolted frame. So here here's an example, right? I, I I only want it to use the bolted frame recipe when it does its calculation, and so I remove the check mark from modular frame so it would only use the bolted, right? If this was checked too, then it might use the normal recipe instead of the the alternate uh, so anyway the um, this tab here you know just kind of gives us a, a summary of the items that uh, you know that were that you want to track uh, so for example we're only going to use caterium coal copper and iron for this entire build right um, and these limits are what's you know what the default limits are on the map itself by the way and then the recipes, so we looked at that. Okay, so yeah, let's look at the production. So we have, um, the main view that I like to use uh, is the visualiz uh, visualization view, uh, but you also have um, the items view too. So I find this one very useful because it gives you a summary of the total number of items that you're gonna need uh, for the factory itself. Uh, so for example, if I wanna know how much caterium we're gonna be using, it says, well, you need 108 ingots per minute. Uh, 200 copper per minute and 510 iron and so on and so forth. Uh, that's all stuff that I used to track manually in a spreadsheet and uh, now you know now I'm just going to use this tool and it's, it's a great tool. This one kind of this will show you how many buildings you're going to need and you know what it's going to cost for all those buildings for your buildable materials. And uh, overview is just a couple of different tables that kind of combine a lot of that stuff together. Uh, but the one I like to use the most is the vis visualization view. And so the way this works is, and these are all, you know, you can move them around. It starts with the ore, how much ore per minute you need, and then how many ingots you're going to need, and how many smelters it'll require to make that many ingots. Uh, and this is all, like I said, very, uh, adjustable. You can move it around. You can zoom in, zoom out, and uh, super useful. So, so we'll be referring to uh, this as we go throughout this build um, you know to, to see what all we're doing but the one that's the most complicated is the iron of course because it so uh, you know there's a lot more parts that are being made from that iron um, and even though this looks somewhat complex this is still a very simple setup compared to what we're going to have to be doing later so it's just really nice to have this visual um, representation of what we're doing okay so I just wanted to show you that and um, let's go ahead and switch over now to the game and get started with this build all right, guys, so we are going to start uh, with our iron plates. So taking a look on Satisfactory Tools, uh, it says we need eight constructors. We are going to produce 160 iron plates, 90 of which will be fed up to three assemblers making reinforced iron plate, and the other 70 will just go into storage as a buildable. All right, so let's move that off the screen here and get started with that so first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark uh using the grip metal foundation we're going to mark the floor where this is going to go and we're going to go down to about there and we want to go let's see three four five that way and then we'll go that far and then fill all this in and using the grip metal texture here uh, will serve two purposes. First of all, it looks cool. 
but it also will give us kind of a, a place, uh, you know, mark where we need to put the machines. Okay. Yep, that's where that's where we want that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our blueprints, and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and use the mouse wheel to switch my uh, toolbar here. And we'll switch to the number 10 toolbar. And we're going to put our blueprints on this toolbar, the ones that we're going to use frequently. So I want the uh, th uh, three by left, yeah, the three constructors on the left side with no ceiling in two. I want the two by in three. I want the one by in four. And then on the right side, the three by in five, the two by in six, and the one by in seven. So these are all constructors that I set up for this build. And uh, when I first did it, I included the ceilings on them uh, because at that time I wasn't uh, wasn't sure if I was going to build the ceiling or the structure itself ahead of time. And then, of course, I decided to do that. So we probably won't use the ceiling versions at all. We definitely won't on this build, but I might use them for something in the future. I don't know. Very good. Okay, now let's select the number two key. This is our three, uh, three by, and we want to make sure that it's facing to the north with the white arrow and that it's lined up on this seam and that this merger is right in the center of this tile. Excellent. Okay. That's looking good. Now we're going to press the number five key to get the right side version of these guys. And if we see the green line there, that means it's lined up that direction. But we also want to bring this in so that this is in the center of the foundation. And we put that one in place. Excellent. Okay. That's all looking good. And then we need to add just one on the left side and one on the right side. Uh, so that's going to be the number four key for the left side. And we want that to be centered over this seam here. And we got our green line, so we're good to go on that. Now, another thing you can do if you guys didn't know this is if you have a blueprint active and you press and hold the E key, then it bring, brings up a wheel that you can also use uh, to access any blueprints within that subcategory. And so we want the right side number one. So that's another way you can do it. But I, I like to put them on the at least one of them on the toolbar because it's just a lot faster to in, initially access it. OK, so let's put you there. And I can't tell from this angle if that's straight. No, it needs to come this way, one thingy. And we should be good. Good. Okay, now let's hook up uh, the power connections there. And we also need to connect um, all of the belts, uh, both the central belt. And then everything on the right side needs their belts connected because those didn't fit on the blueprint. These machines are just going to be making the default plate recipe with no clocking. So we'll copy those settings and we'll paste them to all of the other machines. There we go. All right, now um, we need to get power run up here. And we're going to do that. I'll show you how we're going to do that. We're going to do it to where most of the wiring is hidden, at least the main uh, the main, main line is going to be hidden. That wiring up there, it, it's not. I haven't decided if I want to try and hide that or not. I might later. We'll see. Uh, and the way that I would do that is I would basically just use like a one meter foundation and cover the ceiling. But again, I'm, I'm still kind of debating as to whether or not that's what I actually want to do. Okay, let's get a couple foundations out here. And I'm going to... Let's remove these two pillars here for a moment. And we're going to run a wire to there. Maybe to... Yeah, to there. 
Now we're going to remove that and we're going to place this wire right there. Let's put these guys back in place and then let's go up. Okay, I'm going to remove you. I think though to uh, to get this to work right, we're going to need to get pretty high up in the air temporarily. Okay. Let's actually go over here. And grab you. And we want to put you right there. Okay, now let's grab you again. And we want to put you right there. Okay, so that hides the the main line uh, in the pillars. I like it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're going to put you there. But then what we have to do is set an individual outlet. Except for we set it and lock it. We don't set it. We, we put it there and lock it, but we don't permanently set it. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, and then I'm going to hold down control and do a, a half a nudge to the right so that it lines up perfectly with that insulator there. And unfortunately, I had to do that with all of these insulators on these machines, do that little nudge thing to get them, you know, as straight as possible on the machine. So I'll be doing a lot of that nudging business. But at the end of the day, it'll look good because everything will be nice and straight. And look at that. Voila. We have power to our machines. It is a beautiful thing. Okay. We can get rid of you now. Next thing we want to do is we want to get our conveyor line run over here. So we're going to bring this uh, down this way. Lock you into there. And then I want to bring you to here here. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a Mark three lift here, just like that. Right. I'm going to put a conveyor pole here. And one here, this second one will not stay there permanently, but it's just a placeholder for us for now. Okay, let's grab a merger. And we want to set that merger here. Run that line there. Grab a Mark III belt and do this. And that gets our ingots down here. Huzzah! Okay, we don't need this any longer. Now we're going to grab a splitter. And look at that. It even lines up for us. It's just another beautiful thing. And we run that into there, and we have connected our iron ingots into our iron plate machines. Super. Okay, we're going to move on to the next set of machines. We're going to set all the machines down and do all the inputs first, and then we'll do uh, the outputs at the end of, of that. Next thing on the list are rods. Let's take a look at our satisfactory tools. Okay, so for rods, we are... We need six constructors. We are producing a total of 90 rods, 40 of which will go to two rotors up on the third floor, and the other 50 will go into storage for buildables. 
six constructors. Let's mark the floor here with grip metal. And this one's only going to be three wide. This setup. And we're going to have to work around the, uh, the center belts here. I think we need to go back probably to at least... Yeah, I think we have to go back that far. Okay, let's get our toolbar here. And we want a, a left side three constructor uh, right there with the front facing that direction. And uh, I think that's about right. That's in the center of you. You're lined up with the edge of that. And then we're going to do another one of those on this side down here. Move it over to here. We have the green line and uh, yeah, that's right. I think so. I think that's right. I could, I suppose I could even do this. I think I will, because there's no reason not to. It just gives us more room to work with over here if we need it. And we still have a full foundation of space before the before the bus line. So yeah, that's what, I'm not entirely sure if that's what I did in my test playthrough, but that's what we're gonna do here. Okay, this wiring is gonna be interesting. Can we get away? Yeah, I think we we can get away with this without any clipping. Yep, we're good. Okay. That was easy peasy, lib and squeezy. Let's grab some lifts. And run these lines back to here. Um, and I'm doing that to get those off the floor so we can easily go through this way. We need to hook up power and iron ingots. Yeah, we can't run that directly there, so what we need to do is go here. And then do this again, this little nudging thingy. Get rid of you. And these machines need to be set to rods. Uh, I, I decided not to, to do the alternate steel rod, even though that's a really good recipe, because um, because we're we're not doing steel yet. I mean, I'm I have like a temporary steel setup, but this is our iron factory, so I'm sh I'm pretty sure I'll use these in the future. But we're just doing the normal rods for this one. And I did even I did even spec this out, you know, to use the steel ones, but it's more complicated than than it might first sound, because then we've gotta set up a permanent, you know, steel mining situation. And the coal that we have over here is not uh where is that? wherever our coal plant is, yeah, down here in this little area. Uh, those are just two impure nodes. Plus, I want to permanently, you know, in the long term, I want to use those for those 300 watt megawatt power plants anyways. The other coal, which is right over here, uh, docking station right over here, that, that that's already taken for our big coal power plant, so none of that's available. So the next available coal on the map is way the hell over here, right? And so I figured, eh, it's just because this is our starter iron factory. It wasn't worth it to me to try and set all that up. So in case you were wondering why I'm not using that recipe. Okay, so are you guys all set to do rods? I've been blabbing here and not paying attention. Yeah, so we're doing a total of 60 rods, right? Uh, no, sorry. 90 rods, yeah. Because each, each side's doing 45. Sorry, my brain decided to take a nap there. Because we have a total of six, 
and 6 times 15 is 90. Okay. Now, this is a 270 line. And if we look at satisfactory tools here, the uh, iron plates are taking in 240 ingots per minute, which leaves us 30 more ingots, but these require 90, okay? So what we have to do is we have to t start tapping into our second conveyor line because this one by itself is not, uh, we don't have enough to do it. So what we're going to do for that, this is where our input's going to be. We're just going to continue uh, this line on down. And I think I'm going to put you right in the center there. Uh, okay, and then let's let's run another one of you to there. So we basically just need to merge the second line onto this one before this splitter. And then it'll just combine with these ingots over here. Uh, all right, so let's grab a belt there. And let's see, we should be able to bring this to here, I think. We're probably going to have to do the same thing, though, that we did over there, which is fine. Um, the good thing about that is it'll be consistent. All right, now we want a merger. Line that up right here with the output going that direction. Make sure that's underneath there. And then just like we did before. Uh oh. That's not. Why isn't that connecting? That should be connecting. Overlapping another object's clearance. Oh, that belt's crooked. That's the problem. Okay. And then you go there. Then you go here. And you go here. Too high. Still not lined up perfectly with that other one. Oh. And nudge it over. There we go. Okay, yep. I, for some reason, my brain was telling me that this one was straight and I didn't fuck it up. And my brain was wrong. <laughs> okay, now we're in business. And, um, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so we have now merged um, these two together. And we should be good. All right, let's grab this splitter, line it up there, and then feed you into there and we're golden. Make sure everything's flowing through. It's looking good. Okay. And we're making rods. Next our screws. Good old screws. So let's get our grip metal. Mark the floor. Three, four, five. And way back there. We are going to be using the wonderful cast screw recipe for this. 
Um, but it is going to require a fair amount of machines. But I'd still far prefer that recipe over the one that the default, which requires us to make rods first, you know. That one sucks. Okay, so for screws, uh, right here, alternate cast screws, we're going to need a total of 14.4 or 15 constructors for this. And then we are producing a lot of screws for a lot of different things. So 200 screws will go to two rotors up above. 200 screws will go uh, into storage for buildables. 140 will go to our alternate bolted frame recipe assembler, which will be up above. And then 180 screws will go to our three reinforced iron plate assemblers up above. So yeah, lots of screws. Uh, so that means, again, we need a total of 15 constructors. And I think... Yeah, because we have that 0.4, we're going to have to change some clock speeds too. And I have a plan for that that will, uh, I'll show you. Okay. So let's start. Oh, no, wait a second. These are not. Uh, Tread metal or whatever the fuck it's called. Okay. Uh, what do we want? We want the blueprints. Left side. Bring that over here. That's correct. It needs to come this way one. Then we do another left side. Three. Except for that needs to go this way. We're good otherwise. Right? Yeah. So that's six. Twelve. Yeah, let's do let's do the right side ones next. Uh, so we want right side three. This one. Right about here-ish. Move that over to there. That looks good up there. Okay. Let's grab uh, belts. weird sound <laughs> okay let's do another right side three uh, oh yeah I gotta come back further right to about there I think that looks correct and that's in the center That gives us 12, but we need a total of 15. So what we're going to do is... Uh, I think we're going to go with a left side 2, which would be this one. So we're already using our the cloud storage, but it's, it's, it's refilling for us as we go, which is so nice because... You know, I would have had to stop at least once by now and go replenish. So I really love that. That's just amazing. Okay, so let's move you to there. And you're on the seam. Uh, no, you, you need to actually be there. And you need to be here. I think that's right. Yep. We got our green line. Uh, 
And then we just need to do a single right side, which should be number seven here. And we'll put that right about there. Move it over that way and bada bing bada boom. Okay, so I think all of our belts are hooked up. Um, now let's connect our power. Uh, switch back to the other toolbar here. Okay, power's hooked up. And uh, now we just need to assign these machines. I'm just going to set them all to the cast screw recipe with the default clock speeds for the moment and then we'll do the overclocking here in a second. I'm going to actually need to go back to my test save to check how I did that because I did it one way and then I changed it later and I want to make sure I don't get the two of those uh, confused. I am planning to at least in uh, for the screws, not, I think only for the screws, I am planning on load balancing the feeds into the assemblers. Everything else, we're just going to use smart splitters to throw the overflow into storage. But for screws, we're going to load balance them. Just because I can make that work easily. Okay, guys. So, this machine here, we are going to underclock to 40 per minute. And I'm going to um, color it yellow. Uh, let's... Oh, I didn't change these swatches over. I just did on my test save. Well, I changed... Yeah, I don't think I did. So this one was blue. Let's make this one yellow. So we want the primary color to be a yellow for underclocked machines make it a little bit darker yellow and let's just call this um i was gonna call it yellow and then this we're just gonna make black and we'll make it shiny because why the hell not right okay i might actually I think I want that to be a little bit darker. Or maybe a little redder, I should say. Let's just see what it looks like first. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I'll worry about saving it later. Okay, so this one's underclocked to 40 per minute. And this last one, we're going to underclock to 30. 30 per minute. Okay. Now, the reason why we're doing that is because here's how this is going to work. These three machines here are going to produce 150 screws. for storage. They're just, they're going to be for our buildables. Okay. Uh, so that takes care of 150. In fact, I'm even going to put a floor hole there because for these guys, we're going to actually run them straight into the floor when we hook things up later. These... Uh, okay, so... Gotta think about this for a minute. Oh, I know why. We need to come. We need to come over one more. Because I actually have it in my uh, satisfactory tools that we're producing 200 screws for buildables to go straight into storage. That's what was throwing me off there. There, that's better. Okay. So this machine, this machine, and this machine are producing 150 screws plus another 30 screws. 
So that's 180. And those are the screws that are going to feed the reinforced iron plate assemblers. Because they take um, 60 a pop. 60 screws a pop. And we have three of them. Okay. And we want to connect you to here. Now, if we go over across the way here, these three machines are producing 140, and they are going to feed the bolted frame assembler. Yeah, at 140 screws. Okay, so for, for now, I'm just gonna put a lift here that's not necessarily going to be the height that it's going to go out, but it's just it's just to kind of demark that these three are reserved for that purpose. And these four here machines are producing 200 screws for our two rotor machines up above. 200, yeah, for our rotor assemblers. Let's also let's put a lift here too that we'll adjust later. Okay, so that's and so what that will do, of course, is that will perfectly load balance all of our screw inputs for our assemblers up on the third floor. And then, like I said, these 200 here will just be go into storage for us for buildables. Which is actually probably way more than we actually need. You don't, you don't directly use screws a lot for for buildables. Uh, well, when I say buildables, I mean you know for making machines. If do you even use screws for any machines? But you do need them, you know, for parts. They're more of a parts thing. But we'll make two hundred, and then of course the excess will go into the sink and uh, you know still make us points. So there you go. So all of these screws will require 180 iron ingots. These 15 machines. So we, we're using 240, we're using 90, which is 330, and then 180, which is 510. And I'm sending 540 ingots. So that means we'll have 30 ingots left over, which is good. Now, I want to, uh, I, I think I talked about this earlier, but I want a few extra ingots left over to store in case we need them for something. So yeah, I think we're good to go. Okay, that's it guys for setting up our iron machines and our inputs. We do need to work on the outputs of these though. But I think... Oh, we got to get the, sorry, we, we didn't get the in, iron ingots themselves hooked up. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's run you to here. And actually, before we do that, I want to, I want to put a floor hole there, a floor hole there, and a floor hole here. And these will be outputs for our excess ingots of iron copper and caterium. That's what they'll ultimately be. And we'll route that down below later. Okay, and so that means we want to put um, we want to put a lift here going that way. And then we can run this right into that lift. The iron, uh, sorry, the copper and the catarium will come down from that floor and we'll route them down uh, out the, through these holes as well. Good. So all that remains is just putting this splitter on and it lines up for us, thankfully. And there we go. So we should be making screws. All right, guys. Well, that uh, I tell you what I think I'm going to do. I, I think we're going to wait on the outputs. We'll set those up last. Um, yeah, we'll set the outputs up last. But the basic idea is that we're going to we're going to run a conveyor bus along 
the center of this foundation. And then we're gonna be routing stuff up to the upper floors. But I want the other I want the other machines in place first before we do that. So we'll hold off on doing outputs till till the we have all the machines on all of the floors set up. We're gonna have to wrap up this episode here. So in the next episode, we will work on the second floor where we'll where we will set up our Caterium wire and then cable and then copper sheeting machines. And if time uh, is on our side, we should. Uh, the hell, man. That should that should be in there. Uh, then then maybe we can even get started on the assembler machines up on floor three. Okay. Uh, but my my guess is that it's probably going to take us two more, at least two more episodes to finish this build. Um, also, if you're wondering what all this open space over here is going to be for, the answer is quartz and sulfur production so i'm reserving this area of the floor for for those things okay so thanks everybody for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel leave a comment share the video and we'll see you all in the next episode Bye bye